Hey everybody and welcome. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. In this video, I'm hoping to show you guys from beginner to intermediate how to make a 3D character appear 2D. This is gonna cover a lot of shaders and nodes. And I wanna give a little precursor here for you guys. Though this will look perfect for 2D characters in still images, it can require a lot of work for moving animations. Okay, so first let's start with the easiest method that I know of. So for both these methods, something that's gonna be vitally important is making sure that your camera is in the spot that you prefer for your model that you're working with. So we're not gonna be moving this camera. As I said, this is more meant for still images. So get your camera exactly where you want. I recommend uh, for best results, some sort of side profile like this. Once you've placed your camera where you want it to be, head over into your shading tab. Make sure that EV is your render engine because we are doing this in EV. And I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. And then also head over to your viewport shading where it's your rendered viewport shading. And one last thing before we continue, Head over here to your rendered properties on the right side and scroll all the way down and you're going to see your color management on the bottom. So most of the time it will be set or you have set it to filmic, which is always what you want to do usually for most renders. However, for this, you want it set to standard. So now that we've covered all of the basics, Let's get started by actually creating the material. So select the object you want to work with. I'm going to start with this character's skin. And by the way, if you ever want to know how I modeled this character, just check out this video right up here in the upper right hand corner. That'll teach you all the starting points that I learned to start modeling characters like this. And I have very little modeling experience. Okay, so here's this character. And then I'm just going to do plus a new material and we've got this material down here and we're going to start off with the very basic so this is for you beginner blender users and it'll get you the effect without the work so i'm going to delete the principal bsdf and you'll see her skin just kind of goes black there then we're going to do shift a and by the way uh, one thing before we continue, we're going to be working with nodes a lot. So make sure the add-on node wrangler is enabled. Head up to edit, preferences, add-ons, and then type in node wrangler. And make sure you check that box. It is an add-on that comes with Blender. So you shouldn't have to download anything, but it is very important when working with nodes. Okay, X out of preferences. So back to it, we've got our material output here. I'm going to do shift a search and I'm just going to type in layer weight. And there's our layer weight. And then literally we just need one more search color ramp. And we're going to attach the Fresnel to the fac on the color ramp and then the color to the surface on the material output. And then you'll see we've already sort of got the effect we want. However, we're not quite there. It's a cool effect, but it's not quite what we want. Now on our color ramp, instead of linear, we're gonna change it to constant. And as you can see, we've already kind of got a 2D effect for our, this character. And now you can change these colors accordingly, like for this black, maybe you want it more of a uh, light blue. And one thing that I would recommend almost always is if you can have your colors be light colors, have the light taken all the way up and you'll get a lot more of a abstract look for your characters. I recommend it usually having your color all the way ramped up and like, let's say I want to add another color in here. I can up this color and let's change it to purple. And you can adjust 
the strength of your white and adjust the strength of your purple and you get something pretty cool just to show you guys one more time so there's her skin now let's just grab her little dress thing here and we're gonna do plus new material just delete that principal bsdf do shift a layer layer weight and then shift a color and color ramp and again this is the easiest possible method <clears throat> i'm sorry guys i'm getting over a cold <laughs> this is the easiest possible method with the least amount of work fresnel to fac color to surface and switch linear to constant and then just adjust as you see fit so something I also recommend like when doing this to try and keep your uh, outline images like your outlines roughly the same size so like you'll see I have kind of a very light outline for uh, the white on her and if I weigh up this it looks kind of weird around the transition point to the other parts of the model so I'm just gonna keep those roughly the same so it looks a little bit more normal and uh, let's think something that might be kind of cool for this dress let's just make it pink let's go pink add another color and kind of a different shade of pink uh, you can get some really really cool effects and if you want to make the outline black on the characters you can just make this this black and I'm gonna click her and turn that white on the color ramp to black and now you got a black outline instead so that to me is one of the easiest possible methods you can do for your characters now let's carry on to do the intermediate effect and you beginners it always helps to still learn this stuff I recommend you stick around but if that's all you needed take off and the rest of you blender users follow me to the intermediate comic 3d style okay so here's our character we're starting fresh again for you guys and for this, I'm going to try and go as slow and keep it as simple as I possibly can. But feel free to pause the video at any point and let's try and do this together. So I'm going to click new for the material. And we this time are going to keep the principal BSDF. This will help in the future if you ever want to do more things with this principal BSDF for your character as well as adjust the metallic and the specular. So we're gonna do shift A and we are going to add RGB and then shader to RGB and just drop it right in that principal BSDF and material output. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start by adding the coolest thing. We're gonna add polka dots to this character, that those little dots on comics that kind of help understand where shading is occurring so to add those little polka dots that a lot of comics have we're going to do shift a search and we're going to type in coordinate and we're going to drop that coordinate down here now we're going to do shift a search and we're going to type in voronoi and just select that voronoi texture and then next we're going to do shift a search and type in mix and just put this mix right next to the Voronoi and then the next thing we are going to do just want to make sure we're recording the next thing we are going to do is do shift a search and then we're gonna type in math <laughs> okay so for the math, we're going to switch that to greater than. We might adjust this later, but we'll see. And we're just going to drop it right there in between the material output. And you'll see already we have basically what we did on the beginner format, but this is a little bit more specialized and outlines it more correctly. I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> However, now we're going to go down here. And for the texture coordinate, we're gonna take the camera and hook that into the vector. 
And for the Voronoi texture, we're gonna take the distance and hook that into the factor for the mix. And then this mix, we're gonna take and hook into the threshold of the greater than. And you're gonna see it's gonna change the whole thing white. Don't freak out. Now all we need to do is kind of adjust this A and B until we can see things. And so there I can already see kind of what's going on with our character. And I'm gonna take the randomness of the Voronoi texture and bring that all the way down. And now what we need to do is we have a slight scaling problem. So I'm gonna up the scale of this by somewhere around there. And you'll see we've got this really cool comic effect already. Um, I found a couple of different things also when doing this effect. Uh, so for instance, I'm gonna zoom in here. Like I'm not loving some of the locations of these dots. So you've got a couple options. So by adjusting your mix over here, the A and the B, don't freak out, it's not precise. Just play with them until you think it looks good. Like maybe you want less dots or more dots and then just stop where you think it's a good amount. But you can also, if you're not loving where these dots are at, you might be able to move, uh, depending on the, your mesh and if it has good, good topology, <laughs> uh, you might be able to use the UV instead of the camera and sometimes that can give you a little bit nicer results it does have larger scales so you have to scale it up even more and you'll see i personally i think that i'm getting a much nicer and cleaner effect using the uv versus the other tools that i have but this isn't always going to be the case another option I guess I'll just throw in just so you guys know is you can also do shift a search and oh goodness what was it it's the camera data so if you put camera data and just throw in view vector uh, that can also get you results that sometimes look cool I'm usually not into it but there is as an option for you guys so I'm gonna just put back in the UV because I think that looks the best now for this character, we want to add color and potentially even more cool outlines for this character. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to actually up that scale even further. Somewhere around there looks pretty nice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do shift a search and then type in mix and we want a color mix. We're going to drop that right there. But the grader will automatically be hooked up to A. Instead, we want that into the factor. And now you'll be like, oh, it was erased. If you just use A, you can control whatever color you want those polka dots to be. So I'm just gonna keep them black for now. And also, I kinda want a cool black outline potentially even on my characters. So what I'm gonna do to get that is I'm gonna do Shift A and I'm gonna type in layer weight and put that down here. And then I'm also just gonna duplicate Shift D, this greater than option. And I'm gonna hook the Fresnel into uh, the value and the value into B. And so already I can see that instead of being greater than, I'm gonna switch this to less than in order to completely invert the black and the white that it was highlighting. And now if I just adjust this, you'll see I've got this cool black outline right here. It's kind of more subtle with these dots, but I have it. And you can adjust it like big, but sometimes it's a little sensitive. So like sometimes I'll even have to go in, I'll just type in 0.15 and then that can get me closer, 0.175. Um, so now we've got a nice black outline and now we're kind of gonna rinse and repeat that process to get more colors into this character. Now I wanna show you guys too. Like I said, so here's front facing and yes, it, like you can get still kind of cool results but it looks much cooler from a side profile and 
you will see I've got these lights and I think here's me moving this light around and it is messing with the shading of this character. So perhaps maybe you'll just want to mess with the lights. Who knows? Now we're going to go to our mix. We're going to shift D and just duplicate that mix. But same thing, we don't want it into A, we want it into the factor. And again, you can now, when you adjust this, it'll adjust both your outline of the character and the comic dots on your character. So if I up this or down it, you'll see it'll adjust everything on that character. And technically for B, same, you can just adjust this to change the color, but we want more fine tuning of our color than that. So now we're gonna just select the less than and layer weight and just duplicate those, drag them down here and then do shift A search and we're gonna type in color ramp. And we're gonna bring the value to the fac and the color to B. And you won't notice any difference. I recommend changing these colors real fast on the color ramp just so we can tell differences really easily. And so now as I adjust the threshold on this, we should see some results. And now just adjust the color ramp to what you think would look best for your character. I like having a little bit more shadow under her jaw for instance so maybe we want to go somewhere like 0.125 and it's possible that's too much shadow let's try 0.15 again let's try 0.175 and just play with this until you feel like you get something that is worth it so like I said, I like to just do as bright as I possibly can for those colors because I think that's what's going to give you some really cool results uh, for an abstract look. And I'm kind of playing off the pink <laughs> that's still left in the scene from just the normal lighting and I'm liking some of these kind of hues. I think that that looks pretty cool. And one thing I might do is adjust yet again these blasted dots because I want them to look as cool as humanly possible. And I might go for kind of a darker vibe for this character. Do this exact same process. Something that could be easy now at this point is uh, saving all this into one node tree. However, you can also just do like, you know, grab everything, control C, then go over to this, delete, and then control V. And now we can also just adjust this article of clothing. Anyway, I hope this is basically giving you guys all the principles of how to do this effect. Um, you guys are more than welcome to leave a like and subscribe if you really want to. <laughs> so sorry. I really let this get out of control, but I hope you guys get the main principle and I hope you guys can appreciate some of the awesome and really neat 2D effects you can achieve using blender shading nodes. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment. I try and read every single comment I ever get and be sure if you enjoyed this video, if it was helpful to please leave a like, please subscribe and Best of all, leave a comment because I love hearing from you guys. Okay, have a terrific day and I will see you guys in the next video. Later.